So we're continuing in Deuteronomy 28, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward, the, toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the raiment, that's what's left over, of his children which he shall leave. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat honey what you eat I'm eating Eric well can I have some no he's all mine don't mess with God don't rebel against God because if you think Deuteronomy is making you sick and make you quiver, chapter 28, imagine a man that's rebelled against God and spends all eternity in a place called hell in the lake of fire. When it comes to sin and it comes to rebelling against the word of God, God is serious. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But preachers and teachers and, and churches don't preach that today. Because isn't this thing just really disgusting what we're reading, what's going on? And yet when a man gets outside the will and the word of God because he has nothing left in the seed and his straightness, it's death wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates the tender and delicate woman among you here's a woman she's just your common woman she's not strange she's just a woman which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot Upon the ground. That adventure, that's the first time adventure shows up there. Let's go on a great adventure. Well, look at the law of what were first appearance in the Bible. This woman is not going to stretch out in a siege, rebelling against God. Isn't that interesting how that word shows up? And we're talking about rebelling against God. Let's head over to Acts 19:31. Acts 19.31 You better believe when God, when God says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ thou shalt be saved. You better believe that God is serious. Acts 19.31 Adventure shows up twice in your Bible. Here's the other place. Are you ready for this one? The first adventure is, here's a woman who is living outside the word of God. She's going to eat her baby. Her children. The second and only, the only two places show up, Acts 19.31. And certain the chief of Asia, which were his friends, talking about Paul, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Look at that. How's the word used in America? Place down, down south of where we are with a six foot rat says, come with our adventure. Then study your word. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to sit her foot, the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicate. She, she walks very carefully. Her high heels may knock her to the ground. So a woman like that today the, at the dentist is like, man, just put regular shoes on if you can't walk. To set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness. That's the first and last time that word shows up. And tenderness. She's very soft walking. Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband. <laughs> so aren't we headed into a great marriage relationships later on after the church is raptured? 
It's only going to get worse. You're going to have a favoritism in the family, according to the Bible. And that favoritism is going to be a little pepper and a little salt. No, you can't eat them. He's mine. Didn't we have that with, with Rebecca and, and uh, Isaac? Oh, Isaac loved his son because he had venison. And Rebecca loved her son Jacob that he made venison to deceive the daddy. What's this with the food? That God told Adam and Eve, you can have everything you want. Just don't eat of that fruit. And they ate of that fruit. And now we're talking about eating the fruit of your children. Come on, Adam and Eve. Did you know that your children are going to eat their children by what you did? Can you imagine a parent going off to hell and having their child stand up and say, Lord, they hate me? Because that child dies gets eaten and he has no knowledge of sin he goes to heaven and those people the great white throne judgment are going to have humans testify against them you imagine your child walking up and say lord they ate me and i've got to wonder do they eat him with the blood he said that's disgusting they're already living outside the word of god why worry about bleeding the child to death to do it there were two women that came to the king in the, in the Old Testament. They said, oh, we boiled my son in, and now we're going to... When I was a teenager, my wife and I, it was this big story about this airplane that crashed in the mountains, and there was only like four survivors. They said, well, how'd you guys survive? Well, we ate all the dead people. That made big news, and they made, I think they made a movie about it. Survival of the fittest. That's Darwinism. That is what you're teaching the kids in school. You want a dinner? Eat that kid after you kill him. Don't be surprised if the kids are getting killed today and the next thing you find out, they start dining on them. That's what the lion does. That's what the tiger does. That's what evolution of animals do. They kill and they eat. They just haven't got that far yet. And toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out between her feet. Do you know what that means? Jewish women, when they gave birth, they don't do it how the how the they something with a stool. But that's her that's her child coming out. That's her child giving birth. And toward her children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of of all things secretly in the seas of straightness wherewith thy enemy shall destroy distress thee in thy gates there's a secret child meaning there <laughs> if thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book deuteronomy numbers leviticus exodus and genesis they're all one book that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. What is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy written? What is the purpose? That you may fear and you may know the Lord thy God. Here it is. So as a Bible-believing Christian on this side of Calvary, I can read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and I can get to know the Lord thy God. What do I learn today in Deuteronomy 28? God is serious about sin. God is serious about his word. You want me to go into perverted modern Bibles that change his word, add his word, subtract his word? After all the mess we just read about so far, people not listening to his word? Now maybe I'm wrong and I'll have to uh, lose a reward and turn it to wood, hay, or stubble. But I go so far as to say as a modern Bible, I don't think you can get saved. 
Not something that takes the word of God and adds and subtracts to it. When these people in chapter 28 don't even listen to the word as is written by Moses and look at all the conflicts and issues and troubles and problems and things they are doing because of the word of God and not listening. And a man goes off into hell by not listening to the word of God and burns for all eternity for not listening to the word of God. Serious. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. That doesn't mean, oh, how happy days. And the plagues of thy seed, your children, even great plagues, <laughs> oh, man, and for long continuance. There's the first time that word shows up. Look at the first words that's showing up. And sore slackness, sickness, excuse me, sickness, itching, <laughs> hemorrhoids, <laughs> mildew, scab. And of long continuance. That means keep going. But it doesn't say forever. It says long. The tribulation period is only seven years long. Moreover, he, may, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Run back to Exodus. You know AIDS came out of Africa? Red? AIDS is grid and grid is AIDS. Just didn't have a good name. You know, when, when those flies and those, those insects bite you over there? A lot of diseases come out of Africa. And they're not good. Which thou was afraid of. Book of Exodus. And they shall cleave unto thee. Every sickness. I think the Lord's serious, don't you? Every plague which is not written in the book of the law, then will the Lord bring upon thee to thou be destroyed. We've read from Genesis 1 to, to Deuteronomy 28 so far. It's a family. This is our second time going through. We've read through the whole Bible and studied it every chapter. After what we just read in Deuteronomy 28, after we read in Numbers, Leviticus, Exodus, and Genesis, God said there are yet more diseases, there are more ailments, there is yet more to come that I have not even written it. AIDS is not in the Bible. Yes, it is. You say, where do you find AIDS? AIDS. Every sickness, every plague, which is not written in the book of the law. Syphilis. Gonorrhea. Cancer. There it is. You know, they found Egyptian mummies with cancer. I would then say that would be one of the plagues of Egypt. Ye shall be left few in number. Well, that's the remnant at the end of the tribulation period. Whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for a multitude. Many, 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 many. Because thou would not obey the voice of the Lord thy God why are there ambulances police cars hospitals lawyers band-aids pharmacies because Adam and Eve did not obey the word of God why do we have death the wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why does a man go off into hell? He didn't take that gift. He died without that gift. And it shall come to pass. <laughs> they read that before. That as the Lord rejoice over you to do you good. And to multiply you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. To bring you to naught. Ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest. You don't ever see that written anywhere else but there. Why? New Testament says God's long suffering is not willing that any should perish. Why is that written there? Because the Jews have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy written out. Moses has told them. Time after time after time, what is expected for him? It'd be like a child in school. 
The teacher has spent September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May on 10 questions. She spent nine months on 10 questions. And in June, that child gets the test, 10 questions. And he fails it. Well, the teacher told him, nine months that teacher drilled him. Nine months that teacher taught. Nine months that you, and the student didn't do it. He gets the F because he didn't learn. He didn't do. He failed. Today, oh, just give him an A because, you know, uh, no, 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 no. God ain't, God ain't going to say, oh, just welcome into my heaven because I, no, God's not doing that. Don't you do dare do that. Don't you dare, God, let a sinner not wash in the blood of Jesus Christ in heaven. Don't you dare do that. Don't do that. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. George Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Franklin D. D. Roosevelt, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Their fathers didn't know anything about American presidents. Even wood and stone, Mount Rushmore, totem poles. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, no rest. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. Look at heart condition. Trembling heart. Anxiety. That's what I was trying to think of. That's what it's not. Anxiety. Um, how come I can't think? Nervousness. And failing of eyes. Blindness. And sorrow of mind. There's your mind. There's your brain. Your heart is, is, is completely anxiety. Your, your brain is crying. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. What's going to happen? And thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance. There's the first time that word shows up. Now, I've got assurance of the scriptures. These things have I written unto you that you may know I have eternal life. Here is no assurance because you have disregarded God. You've got anxiety from sin. You have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, would it got to be even? Oh, man, come on, let's get this day with. Oh, TGIF. Oh, sorry. And at even thou shalt say, oh, would it got to be morning? Oh, hurry up, get this done with. For the fear of thy heart, not the fear of God, wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thy eyes, which thou shalt see. Imagine, again, World War II. All those Jews in the Nazi parties. They're trying to erase that too. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He kept telling them not to go back to Egypt. By the way whereof I speak unto you, unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, the land. Not ever recorded that Daniel ever went back. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, slaves. You don't hear about that in the slave trade, do you? And no man shall buy you. And this is exactly what happened under Titus in 70 AD. They put them on the, on the, on the, the auction block and no one bought them. They would buy an African they would buy this group of people or whoever. But the Jewish people were never sold. Titus 70 AD. 